Hello, guess where I am? I'm at Ocean BMW in Falmouth. It's a really chilly day, it was minus three this morning, but I braved the cold weather because it's only cold weather. And what I'm gonna do today, I'm gonna take this little beastie out, which is the F850 GS, and uh, take it for a little ride and see what we think of it. Here is BMW's F850 GS, or whatever they wanna call it. I'm um, just going to take it out for a quick ride. In, initial impressions are I really like it. Keyless start. Whoa. Look at that. TFT screen. And let's go for a little ride and see how we get on. Doesn't that sound lovely? <laughs> it does sound very nice. So lovely sunny day again in Falmouth and um, taking this bike out for a ride. I've been waiting to ride this bike for a long time. I love the 800s, I love the, GS, the uh, F800 GS and the Adventure. I just think they're a, m a much maligned bike. Not many people didn't seem to take off very well for some reason, whether it was mar not marketed properly. But this has been a long time coming, and I say that because there were a few problems with the um, engine. And I was just talking to the guys at Ocean BMW in Falmouth, who've lent me the bike for the day, and they were saying the engine was really rattly. Apparently it's being built in uh, China now, I think, as most things are. And they had a few issues with it. They weren't happy with the reliability, I believe. So they put the bike on hold, which was um, a bit of a nightmare for people who'd already put deposits down to buy bikes and, and all that kind of stuff. And they had to wait about six months, I think, some people. But uh, I believe BMW loaned bikes to people in the interim which was uh, okay but anyway here we are on this it's uh, it actually rides a bit like a v-twin really although it's not a v it's quite high and up front it reminds me of the uh, africa twin and i suppose really as an 850 up against an africa twin which is a thousand they're probably possibly in the same category I'm not sure how um, how they'll compare price wise at the moment but um, this is I quite like this quite a lot and I've only just ridden it about half a mile I really do uh, I do like it it's a bit bouncy on the suspension it's got a 21 inch front tire uh, front wheel which is obviously uh, how it's aimed on an off-road type thing Although I would suggest that most people don't take them off-road, you know, historically GS's and most adventure type bikes are used for touring. Um, that's just the way it is. But TFT screen, very small uh, screen for protection in front of me. Switch gear is the same on most BMW bikes now it's got this uh, little jockey button menu buttons and things like that we'll talk about that in a little while how does it feel it feels very light I mean it's an 850 so it should be quite heavy or you would imagine it would be heavy but um, this feels really quite light and it's quite bouncy on the suspension at the front as you stop you can feel it dipping now I might just be feeling that a little bit more because my GS obviously doesn't dive like that because of the tel telelever suspension they have. But it's uh, it sounds lovely. But just because it sounds nice doesn't mean it is nice. So I think the tank is about 18, 19 litres, which would be good for 200 and odd miles. Uh, the seat feels quite hard, but again, you know, I've just come off another bike so. I don't think it's uncomfortable. It's a really nice riding position. Same upright stance that you get on any any adventure type bike. The foot pegs 
I'm in a good position. It feels really comfortable. And I'm, the actual seat itself is uh, very comfortable uh, in as much as you feel like you've been sat in a, a, a quite um, a dominating position, if that makes sense. The, if I'm sliding up the seat, the rider's seat, it's like it's got two positions. There's one where you're quite far back from from the tank and there's an where just the one I sort of slipped into naturally was to sit right up towards the tank and quite, you can quite hug it quite tightly with your knees if that makes sense but uh, it's very nice I do like it now you can get luggage for this it's the BMW plastic box luggage I don't know they've got a name for it I'm sure and the GS, when it comes out later this year, will have um, GS Adventure. Sorry, will have aluminium boxes. It's 95 brake horsepower. So it'll definitely get you up to the uh, legal limit in the UK, 70 miles an hour, quite quickly. And I'm sure you can go over it if you really wanted to. Mirrors are standard BMW mirrors that they're putting on all their bikes, particularly these type at, uh, at the moment. Really good field of view in them actually, it's, they're, they're quite good. Now some of these tyres have got, um, some of the, sorry, some of the bikes have got different tyres on them. On one of the bikes in the showroom it's got the um, Metzler Carouse, not the Carouse Street, just the Carouse which is a bit of a knobbly tyre, all situated to off-road. And this one, I believe, has got Panicky 3, sorry, Anarchy 3s on it. But I checked. Okay, so, done a little bit of a, a show and tell around the bike. I'm going to take it off the centre stand. It is so light, this bike. It really is a nice, a nice weight for a bike that's quite big. Feels quite tall, but I've got both feet down. Which uh, some people feel feel that they have to have. And off we go for a little ride. Bit of off-roading looking a car park like this. Do you know it makes you feel really confident actually? I quite like this bike. The position of it is very good this one has a quick shifter fitted to it well I'm hoping it has <laughs> I'm saying that I might have just ruined the gearbox but it's very smooth. I do like it. If I was to make a choice, and this is probably very controversial to say this, if I was to make a choice between an Africa Twin or this, do you know I think I'd go for this? And I've been raving on about the Africa Twin because it was um, a dream bike of mine when I was a lot younger. And I'm thinking, oh, you know, could I do it? Could I buy one? Apart from the chain issue, which I know everyone hates, but I think this is possibly a better option than the Africa Twin. It's lighter, same sort of size tank as the uh, basic Africa, and I'm sure when the Adventure comes out, we'll do a, re a review of that and see how that fares up against the um, the Africa Twin Adventure version. So here we go. We're in. Um 40 miles an hour now, 5,000 RPM in second. Got up into third. It likes that, but at 30, it definitely likes being in second where the engine's revving a bit harder. But you know what? I really like it. Comfortable. The seat when I first got on felt initially very hard, and it might just be because I just jumped off my big battle bus. 
Um, I think this is going to be a comfortable seat. Whether you're going to do long tours on the bike, which is what a lot of people will do on them anyway, I think, uh, you possibly might need to get an air hawk. Uh, I only say that because I've had people riding these types of bikes on tours with me and um, they've always had that kind of extra seat comfort added to them. But you know, it's really smooth. Very smooth, actually. Gear changing using the just the clutch, the, the lever, is good. Very comfortable. And if you're using the quick shift, it takes each bike is different, you know, it just takes a bit of time to get used to it. And I haven't ridden this for very long, but I think this will be okay. It's um it's as good as any other quick shift I've had. No vibration to speak of through the handlebars. That you, you know, I'm only doing 40 at the moment. Some bikes are horrendous, aren't they? You'll, you'll all testify to that. Feels very soft on the suspension, but I don't know how it's been set up. Um, you know, and it is the basic model of them. I'm suppose I should, I'm sure with the if you spend more, you'll get the ESA fitted to it and all that kind of stuff, uh, which would obviously tweak the suspension quite a bit. But you know, it's okay get used to it certainly so what would you use it for certainly good enough for a tour certainly obviously commuting ideal I don't think there's anything it can't do really I do like it I'd have to buy a bigger screen because I'm just about to go on a dual carriageway now and see what it's like but I would imagine you'd need just a slightly bigger screen we're going to have to change our route, I think, if all these, <laughs> these roadworks continue. Our little test route. I'm deliberately taking it across all the hard, crappy bits of the road to see how it copes, and do you know it copes okay? Some bikes, like it's like riding over blocks, isn't it? This is uh, managing some of the bigger potholes. Well, okay, as I suspected, once you got up to um, a bit of speed, I got up to 60 miles an hour there. Because of the small screen, you do feel the pressure on your chest. And so you'd need, if you're going to do long tours, you'd need a better uh, screen to fit on this, I think. But that said, it's, you know, I've ridden worse bikes. If that's my only complaint about it, I think that's doing pretty well. And it's not a complaint, it's just an observation. So I really like the bike. Smooth, comfortable, would I buy one? Yes, definitely. And I think that's, uh, that's a pretty good indication. Not just because I say I want to buy it, but um, if you get off a bike smiling and go, oh, I really like that, that's a good thing.